Welcome to the 56th annual meeting of the St. Louis area's Council of Governments and Metropolitan Planning Organization. We will announce and honor this year's outstanding local government award recipients. We have provided a program on the events page of the East to West Gateway website that details the accomplishments of this year's winners. I urge you to read about them. Also on the events page <clears throat> is East West Gateway's combination annual report and calendar. In a typical year, this would be placed at your table, but since this year continues to be far from typical, staff will provide hard copies upon request. Along with an overview of the agency's major activities and accomplishments for the year, the calendar includes photographs il illustrating the many distinctive places, people, and events in our region. Since its founding in 1965, the East-West Gateway Council of Governments has worked collaboratively with federal, state, and local partners to improve the lives of residents of the city of St. Louis and seven surrounding counties in Missouri and Illinois. We accomplished this by coordinating investments in transportation infrastructure and developing plans and programs related to air and water quality, disaster preparedness, regional security, sustainability, and policy research. In each case, we rely on strong relationships with the cities, counties, and organizations joining us here today. You are our membership and our most important partners. This philosophy is evident in the way East-West Gateway does its work. We provide a forum for elected and government officials, planning professionals, nonprofit and private sector partners, and citizens to come together and set regional priorities on critical issues. We believe this coordinated coalition building approach is the only way to harness the immense potential of our region and address the many challenges and opportunities we face. After our business meeting, we will be celebrating the notable achievements of the past year as we present the annual Outstanding Local Government Achievement Awards, often called the oldest. Typically, at this point in the program, we would begin our luncheon following a blessing over the food and the reading of an in memoriam list. Although we will not be sharing a meal together today, it is important for us to continue the tradition of recognizing and honoring those elected officials and public servants who have died over the past year. I would now like to ask Jim Wild, the executive director of East West Gateway to deliver our memorial to those who have passed. Thank you, Kurt. Each year, East West Gateway Council of Governments honors those elected officials and public servants who we've lost since last November. Please join us in remembering the following individuals. Sergeant Herschel Turner, City of Moline Acres, Missouri. Mark Cross, former mayor, City of Troy, Illinois. Security guard James Cook, contract security guard, Bi-State Development. Jim Dodd, former Madison County board member. Albert Sullivan, founder of Fathers and Family Support Center. Viola Murphy, former mayor, city of Pool Valley, Missouri. Alderman Larry Arnowitz, former alderman, city of St. Louis, 12th Ward. Gail Mitchell, former longtime mayor, Fairview Heights, Illinois. Don Fair, Lifetime Achievement Awardee, City of Fairview Heights, Illinois. Carolyn McDowell, City Clerk for the City of Olympian Village, Missouri. Fire Chief William Todd Werner, City of South Roxana, Illinois. Hazel Irby, former St. Louis County Council member. Betty Thompson, former Missouri State Representative. Dr. Henry Givens, Jr. Retired president of Harris Stowe State University. Police officer Brian Pierce, Jr., City of Brooklyn, Illinois. William R. Bill Hain, former Illinois State Senator, County Board Member, and Madison County State's Attorney. Winona Jean Schreiber, first female St. Louis County Police Officer. Todd Aiken, former U.S. Representative for Missouri's 2nd District, Tiffany Graham, 
former mayor, city of Greendale, Missouri. Tom Hannigan, former Missouri State Representative. Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz, city of Wentzville, Missouri. And police officer Tyler Timmons, city of Pontoon Beach, Illinois. I will now introduce to you the members of the East West Gateway Council of Governments Board of Directors. Our executive committee members are Dennis Gannon, County Executive, Jefferson County, Mark Kern, Board Chairman, St. Clair County, Tim Brinker, Presiding Commissioner, Franklin County, Steve Elman, County Executive, St. Charles County, Vicki Kerber, County Board Chairman, Monroe County, Tishwara Jones, Mayor, City of St. Louis, Dr. Sam Page, County Executive, St. Louis County. Also voting members, Terry Briggs, Mayor, City of Bridgeton and President, Municipal League of Metro St. Louis, Ron Counts, Mayor, City of Arnold, Rita Hurd Days, Councilwoman of the First Council District, St. Louis County, Robert Easton III, Mayor, City of East St. Louis, Barbara Gelsman, Geisman, sorry, region, Regional Citizen, City of St. Louis, C. William Grogan, Regional Citizen, St. Clair County, Mark Kupski, Mayor, City of Fairview Heights, and President of the Southwestern Illinois Council of Mayors, John Laker, Regional Citizen, State of Illinois. Roy Mosley, Regional Citizen, St. Clair County. Lewis Reed, President, Board of Aldermen, City of St. Louis. Herb Simmons, Village President, Village of East Brandelet, uh, and President of the Southwestern Illinois Planning Commission. Seth Spizer, Mayor, Village of Freeburg, and Vice President of the Southwestern Illinois Council of Mayors. Don Summers, Jr., Regional Citizen, St. Louis County. David Schwind, Regional Citizen, Madison County. John White, Councilman, District 7, St. Charles County. And Ron Williams, Regional Citizen, Madison County. Non-voting members include Holly Bieneman, Bureau Chief, Bureau of Planning, Illinois Department of Transportation. Patrick McKenna, Director, Missouri Department of Transportation. Talby Roach, President and CEO of Bi-State Development. And Aaron Willard, Office of the Governor, State of Missouri. And our Executive Director is Jim Wild. I would now like to call the meeting to order for a brief business session. There is one item on our agenda, the approval of the 2000 and, uh, 2022 agency budget. The mayors and other members of the council have received the budget as recommended by the board of directors. May I have a motion to approve the 2022 agency budget? Kern moves. Uh, Kern uh, makes the motion, uh, county board chairman from St. Clair County. May I have a second? Uh, Brinker second. Tim Brinker second. We will be conducting the vote through the Zoom meeting platform polling function. Uh, when you see the question, please select your response. So if it, you are in favor, please choose yes or opposed no. The yeses have it, the budget has been approved, and that concludes the business meeting. Now, let's begin the awards portion of the program. To introduce this year's honorees, I'll hand things over to Executive Director Jim Wild. Thanks, Kurt. Today, we're taking time to celebrate the exceptional accomplishments of local, local officials and their partners with the 2021 Outstanding Local Government Achievement Awards. We want to thank those of you who made nominations this year. As always, it was an exceptional group of nominees. Each year, the Outstanding Local Government Achievement Awards, also known as the Olgas, recognize many examples of great local government programs and people in our region. We will start today's recognition with the Gateway Lifetime Public Service Award, which honors exemplary individuals 
who have given a lifetime of service to the public sector and the community. We have two winners this year. The first award goes to Stephen Ackery for his dedicate, decades of dedicated public service to the city of St. Louis and St. Louis region. Stephen Ackery's commitment to community, excuse me, to community development in the St. Louis region has spanned his entire career. Stephen has over 30 years of experience in community development with considerable knowledge and experience in development finance, particularly with the structured financing of development in more difficult to develop areas. Over the decades, he's mentored countless other community development professionals and provided critical support to smaller organizations. Stephen received an undergraduate degree from George Washington University and a law degree from Washington University in St. Louis and is a member of the Missouri Bar. He worked in three successive City of St. Louis mayoral administrations and is the former director of the City of St. Louis Community Development Agency. Under his leadership in 1996 and 1997, the CDA financed and developed over a thousand homes, over 1300 home improvement loans and over 1100 home buyer assistant loans. In 1997, Stephen was a Fannie Mae Foundation Fellow at Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government's Executive Program for State and Local Government Officials. CDA was the recipient of five National Best Practices Awards, Best Practice Awards from the Department of Housing and Urban Development in 1997 and 1998. Stephen started at RISE Community Development in 1999 and was the executive, and executive director and president from 2002 until his retirement early this year. RISE is a nonprofit organization that specializes in community-based community planning and redevelopment. Over the course of his tenure at RISE, the organization, in partnership with other community-based organizations, developed more over 2,800 homes and apartments, representing over $470 million in affordable housing investments in the city of St. Louis and the St. Louis region. Through its lending and other programs, RISE has assisted in development of an additional 2,700 homes and apartments, representing another $335 million in affordable housing investment. His professionalism and high level of leadership has raised the bar for all community planning professionals in the region. We will now play a brief video highlighting Stephen and his contributions to the region. I started my career in the public sector, working for the city of St. Louis, where I was eventually appointed by the mayor as director of community development, and then moved to rise uh, midway through my career Stephen was the executive director and president of RISE for about 20 years. During that period, uh, RISE grew from a small organization uh, with assets of a couple million dollars and doing small projects with other nonprofits to when I left having assets over 20 million dollars and uh, having the capacity to do development of affordable and mixed income housing of 50 to 80 units with commercial development. I worked with Stephen um, for not nearly as long as I would have liked, for two about two and a half years since joining RISE. He's kind of the consummate professional and his leadership style is very much uh, fostering an environment that values critical thinking and creativity and problem solving where uh, people are, are really pushed um, to grow as professionals and uh, kind of carve out their own niche of expertise. We don't just talk about change, we make change and that can be seen um, visibly in the communities where RISE works. So, uh, that, I think, helps the region overall. I was certainly surprised when I heard that I would be receiving this award. 
I have always been very proud of the work that I've done at RISE and before that in my 30 plus years in community development. So I'm very proud to be receiving it and quite humbled by it. On behalf of East West Gateway and the elected officials of the region, I am pleased to recognize Stephen Ackery as a recipient of the Gateway Lifetime Public Service Award. Our next Gateway Lifetime Public Service Award goes to Richard Soje for his decades long dedication and heartfelt service to the community. He has volunteered countless hours of time to the economic development of the St. Louis metropolitan area by serving on many prominent boards, including the St. Louis Regional Chamber and Growth Association, the Leadership Council of Southwestern Illinois, the St. Louis Regional Business Council, the St. Louis Lambert Airport Commission, and the Missouri Historical, so Board, Historical Society Board. As chairman of the Board of Touche Regional Hospital, Rich has been instrumental in the development and expansion of healthcare services to low-income families, specifically underprivileged women and children in Southwestern Illinois. Richard is also chairman of the St. Clair County Building Commission, which oversees continued development of Mid-America St. Louis Airport. For years, Rich has emphasized the importance of bringing together and developing the entire St. Louis region as one united community. Rich's distinguished contributions and accomplishments have improved the economic prosperity, social welfare, and individual lives of many people in Southwestern Illinois and the St. Louis region. We would, will now play a brief video highlighting Rich and his contributions to the region. Rich Sojé means a lot to our community. He, he has been around for many years, but they've been very productive years. He's a, a businessman who knows how to make things work. Well, I'm president of East County Enterprises, uh, and we are a real estate development company uh, doing all kinds of property management, warehousing, land sales, um, office buildings, um, all kinds of different situations. So whether it's helping to create and build the Gateway Grizzlies uh, baseball league and team. You know, everyone loves baseball. <laughs> are the local hospital, are the Public Building Commission, which operates Mid-America Airport for St. Clair County. Rich has been a strong part of all of it. Well, when I found out about being a, a Lifetime Achievement Award winner, I, I really reflected on so many people that I've worked with in the past on these boards. The whole idea of, of you know, a spirit of cooperation and people getting together to have a purpose of, of why this board is, you know, is here and, and that that board will move things forward, not just uh, you know, show up for meetings, but really taking positive steps. And I think we've done that. As chairman of the Public Building Commission, he's responsible for making sure that all our buildings are operating properly. And in addition, making sure that Mid-America Airport grows, prospers, uh, and continues to operate. With the, the terminal that we have there, and, and we have a, a airline that's being very successful there at, at this moment, Allegiant Airlines. We just announced uh, some further growth by Boeing, building a manufacturing facility, which will create 300 jobs uh, in, a, in a period of time. So uh, those little successes, you start adding those up, and you know, next thing you know, you've got something really happening in your community that will you know, move your community forward. On behalf of East West Gateway and the elected officials of the region, I'm pleased to recognize Richard Soje as recipient of the Gateway Lifetime Public Service Award. Our next category is exemplary accomplishments by a local government, jurisdiction, agency, or individual. We have two awards in this category. We'll first recognize the Hazelwood School District Board of Education for their Breaking the Silence, Student Voices on Racial Justice and Equity Initiative. In response to the tragic killing of George Floyd in 2020, 
and a national cry for change, the Hazelwood School District Board of Education began the collective work of creating a statement of solidarity. The groundbreaking statement includes action steps to make Hazelwood School District more inclusive and provides a blueprint to break down the structural barriers that exist in the educational system under the board's system. Under the board's leadership, the statement created guidance for a framework to achieve greater equity and eliminate systematic racism throughout the Hazelwood School District learning community. We will now play a brief video describing the Hazelwood School District Board of Education's Breaking the Silence Student Voices on Racial Justice and Equity Initiative. Well, the program that is being honored today started in Hazelwood School District in July of 2020. We hosted an emotional student-led virtual panel that drove home the need for strategic and swift action related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Breaking the Silence, HSD Student Voices on Racial Justice and Equity gave a diverse group of students a platform to share their experiences in our schools and in the surrounding community. Topics included interaction with police officers, how we could make our district's curriculum more inclusive for them. Uh, the students also talked about their interpersonal interactions with fellow students and staff. The board listened along with the rest of our community and we learned vital information that has really helped inform important decisions we've made since that time. The vision resulted in a statement of solidarity and in this document we've included concrete steps aimed at ensuring our schools are welcoming and safe spaces for all students and staff. With the purpose of this statement in mind, the board facilitated this panel discussion with our students where they had the opportunity to talk about racial justice and equity. This program stands out because the panel was led by students. It gave them an opportunity to share their unfiltered experiences and thoughts in a public space. They really shared some personal stories during this forum. Um, they were transparent, they were honest, they were bold, um, and what they told us helped the board create the district's first policy on racial equity. This policy empowers district administrators, faculty, and staff to really do the work necessary to eradicate any traces of systemic racism and inequity in our learning community. It is a really good model of how school districts can empower students to be active participants in the policies that shape their educational experiences. They really are the subject matter experts and they have something to say. We need to listen to what they say and use their experiences and their input to help guide our decision making. On behalf of East West Gateway and the region's elected officials, I'm pleased to recognize the Hazelwood School District Board of Education as the recipient of the exemplary accomplishment by a local government, jurisdiction, agency, or individual award. Our second award in this category goes to the St. Louis County Library. Inventive partnerships ramped up during the pandemic and St. Louis County Library's strong emphasis on strategic partnerships was a lifeline for patrons as the St. Louis, as the St. Louis region faced the COVID-19 pandemic. The library looked for opportunities to get bridge gaps in service and to help with issues like the digital divide, food insecurity, economic instability, and health equity. Library spaces were critical to this work, and the St. Louis County Library transformed branches into vibrant community hubs. We will now play a brief video describing the achievements of St. Louis County Library in 2020 and 2021. The St. Louis County Library during the pandemic 
really strengthened its role as a center of community by offering some non-traditional services to our patrons while we were all closed and on lockdown. So we offered drive through meals, diapers, and period supplies at many of our branches. Also Chromebooks. Uh, I'm a president of the Board of Education in North County, and many of our families did not have uh, technology, and we were able to provide them through, through the generosity of the St. Louis County government, uh, Chromebooks and hotspots, so that they could uh, participate in virtual learning. I think this program is unique because it assisted people of all ages in our region. It helped with parents and families who were struggling to figure out where their meals would come from, where they would get diapers, and there are so many isolated seniors in our region who COVID really impacted in a huge way. So having a device that they can connect and Zoom with their families was very important for them. What's unique about this program is the collaboration among a number of organizations, Operation Food Search, the, the Diaper Bank, St. Louis County Government, school districts in St. Louis County, that we work together to meet the common need of uh, those uh, we serve. Most of us don't have to worry about food on the table or where we're going to get uh, diapers for our baby. Uh, for the people, many of the people we were serving, these were major needs uh, for them. This program really impacted the region because when people weren't sure where to go, they came to the library. They knew that we were a trusted center of community, that we were located all over St. Louis County, 20 branches, and when they came to us, we were there to help them. We also offered a really unique service for the justice involved, and we're continuing to do that even now. On Tuesday nights, people who are involved in the court system can visit our Flores and Valley branch. We partnered with the Missouri Public Defender's Office, the Prosecuting Attorney's Office in St. Louis County, the Bail Project, UMSL, and a number of other organizations to offer the Tappan Center. And to date, oh, over 200 people have visited the center and over 200 warrants have been quashed for people who fell out of um, contact with the court system during the pandemic. It was time to help the community. Some people might call that uh, uh, mission creep. To us, it was being there when our patrons needed us most. On behalf of East West Gateway and the region's elected officials, I am pleased to recognize the St. Louis County Library as a recipient of the exemplary accomplishments by a local government, jurisdiction, agency, or individual award. Our next category is exemplary collaboration, partnership, or regional initiative. We have two awards in this category. The first award goes to St. Clair County, Representative Latoya Greenwood, Representative Jay Hoffman, Senator Christopher Belt and Greater St. Louis Inc. for introducing and working tirelessly for approval of licensure portability legislation in the state of Illinois. The St. Clair County Board Chairman, Mark Kern, commissioned a working group to understand how the region could better support military families. The commission group identified the need of licensure portability legislation in Illinois. Licensure portability refers to the ability to transfer a professional license from one state or US jurisdiction to another. So that professional, so that a professional can continue their occupation after relocation. Without it, the careers of military member spouses could be impacted and Scott Air Force Base could become less de desirable, a less desirable location. St. Clair County Director of Military Affairs, Kimberly Huth, worked with Illinois State Representative Latoya Greenwood, um, Illinois Representative Hoffman, and Illinois Senator Belt, and Greater St. Louis Inc. to craft updated licensure portability legislation. Ultimately, House Bill 2776 passed and was signed into law by Governor Pritzker on August 16, 2021. 
We will now play a brief video describing the licensure portability legislation. In March of 2020, the Air Force released a study that scored um, each community surrounding a military installation on license portability and education. Chairman Mark Kern commissioned a working group in August of 2020 that specifically said, how can we better understand the framework that affects our community, which is St. Clair County, and we are home to Scott Air Force Base, so we have you know, 10,000 workers there, but those, are, those come with families. So our overall goal was to understand the framework of the study, the economic development for our community, and also how we can better support the military families that uh, live and work on Scott Air Force Base. One of the main goals was to look at license portability. You think about how a military family is affected. So if I'm married and my spouse is with me and he's a cosmetologist and he moves to our community, it often takes a year to two years for, to transfer a license. The Air Force and DOD have said that's not enough. We need to be better for our families. Representative Greenwood, Senator Belt, myself, and a retired Brigadier General Darren James, we would off, we decided to change the language and maybe reduce barriers so that military families could come to the state of Illinois and begin working within 30 days instead of the six years or two years that it used to take them to begin work. This legislation, House Bill 2776, that will go into law in January of 2022 will impact the region by bringing missions to Scott Air Force Base and also ensuring that we don't lose missions. The DOD is starting to look at communities to say how you support military families matters. I believe this program is worthy of an outstanding local government achievement award because of the work that was done behind the scenes and all of the silent warriors that said military families matter. The military family member is a general's wife or husband or an airman's wife or husband. We and our team has spoken and the state of Illinois has spoken and said that you matter. This also matters for the economic development of the state of Illinois. When we look at our community, we have 10,000 workers or more on Scott Air Force Base. The economic development that that affords our community is just incredible. In order for that to happen, we have to have silent warriors like that. We are honored to receive this award. Just like so many other nominees, um, we're grateful to have received the award and just to be nominated was an honor, but to receive the award was, was, really, was really incredible. On behalf of East West Gateway and the region's elected officials, I am pleased to recognize St. Clair County Representative Greenwood, Representative Hoffman, Senator Belt, and Greater St. Louis Inc. as recipients of the Exemplary Collaboration Partnership a Regional Initiative Award. Our second award in this category goes to the St. Louis Metropolitan Pandemic Task Force and all eight county health departments for their regional pandemic response. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, St. Louis region's largest healthcare systems began working together in April of 2020 as the St. Louis Metropolitan Pandemic Task Force. At the same time, the Departments of Public Health for Franklin County, Jefferson County, St. Charles County, St. Louis City, and St. Louis County in Missouri, and Madison County, Monroe County, and St. Clair County in Illinois worked above and beyond to keep people safe. In an unprecedented fashion, the task force and the health departments collaborated to create and implement robust plans to assist businesses and schools with mitigation strategies, plans for a surge in COVID-19 cases, and address capacity concerns, such as staffing, ventilator shortages, availability of testing materials, and other critical supplies. The health departments work to stay ahead of an unfolding pandemic and manage public health needs that included public education, case investigation, and vaccine distribution. We will now play a brief video about the achievements of the St. Louis Metropolitan Pandemic Task Force and the county health departments. The program that's being honored is the Metropolitan St. Louis Pandemic Task Force. 
That was a group that formed at the beginning of the COVID pandemic that brought together the health systems of the region with the public health officials and elected officials, as well as representatives of the business community. The purpose was to try to coordinate how we responded to the challenges that the COVID pandemic put in front of us. The response has been unique in the cooperation among the region's public health departments with hospitals and healthcare systems, schools, and the business community. The pandemic uh, has been something that none of us were really ready for. Uh, there was no book we could check out at the library on how to respond to it. We sort of had to go, go forward and do the best we can. We knew that our large health systems were all gonna be challenged to be able to manage the demands in front of us and thought it would be a good idea if we shared ideas and came up with a joint strategy. It was a unique collaboration at the time and I think is one that, that still stands out in terms of uh, public responses to COVID. The things that made this collaboration work especially well was the um, clarity about what each individual stakeholder brought to the table. The health system served as an unbiased observer of what was happening, capitalizing on their expertise in infection prevention and understanding disease patterns in the community. These local public health departments uh, that are not regularly staffed for such enormous tasks have worked tirelessly managing public health issues that span the need for public education. Large-scale vaccination distribution and administration uh, unprecedented case investigation, contact tracing, and isolation or quarantine orders as needed. The government agencies involved and public health offices involved had the uh, capability of implementing social controls and other measures that were going to be essential to containing the epidemic at the onset. The people on the ground, the people in the departments were constantly talking to each other, exchanging information, trying to help each other. I think uh, together we accomplished a lot more than any of us would have uh, working solely by ourselves. The other sponsors in the group, business community, uh, members from the uh, Federally Qualified Health Center, were also very important in helping to shape opinion and uh, get endorsement to the whole idea. None of us went into it with an eye towards uh, getting uh, rewarded or recognition for it. We really went into it with the idea that the healthcare system was under serious threat and that if we didn't take steps, we could compromise uh, healthcare for the entire region. So uh, getting this is really icing on the cake. It's very, very pleasant surprise. On behalf of East West Gateway and the region's elected officials, I'm pleased to recognize the St. Louis Metropolitan Pandemic Task Force and county health departments as recipients of the Exemplary Collaboration Partnership or Regional Initiative Award. Our last category is Leadership in Planning and Design Innovation. We also have two awards in this category. The first award goes to Citizens for Modern Transit and AARP in St. Louis for their Transit Stop Transformation Project. Citizens for Modern Transit, the St. Louis Region's Transit Advocacy Organization, and AARP in St. Louis, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that empowers people to choose how they live as they age, work together on projects that enhance transit access points. Transit Stop Transformation projects highlight transit ability, transit's ability to positively influence the community and highlight how transit stops can be transformed into active, engaging areas that connect individuals and neighborhoods. To date, two Transit Stop Transformation projects have been successfully completed with two more coming in the coming year. We will now play a brief video about transit stop transformations.
Citizens for Modern Transit is partnering with AARP in St. Louis on this placemaking program that we're calling the Transit Transformation Project. And what we're doing is we're focusing our efforts around bus stops or Metrolink stations that may not have very much around them and really transforming them into vibrant, interactive spaces we are really excited about this project because the first time in the St. Louis market around public transit, we're seeing this collaboration and this public-private partnership to really take something that may not have been a focus before and really move it to something that's a part of the fabric of the community. And we did our first stop at the, in the city of Maplewood. And then our next one, our most recent one, has been at Emerson Park in East St. Louis. In Maplewood, they now call it the front door to their downtown business district. In Emerson Park in East St. Louis, that transformation is now being programmed for other events in the community that don't even have to do with transit riders, but open that opportunity for transit riders as well. Really what we're trying to do is activate the space. We're taking a sea of concrete and we're adding color, we're adding shade, we are adding the things that people need to have an enjoyable transit experience. One of the cool things that we're doing with it is we're engaging the community all the way through the process. We want to make sure that these become more a part of the fabric of the community. They're more exciting, they're more engaging, and they're potentially a catalyst for further development around those areas. This project requires on the ground residents, businesses, stakeholders, Anyone that intersects around this bus stop or this Metrolink station, they're being engaged on what they would like to see, the vision for the future around this. And it's really great to see the ownership and residents and riders are taking responsibility for the improvements at the stations. And we've seen no vandalism, nothing around these fabulous looking stations. What makes this unique to the St. Louis region are several things and makes it worthy of the award today. That is the community uh, partnerships. So public-private partnerships all the way through this project. The community engagement all throughout the whole process, beginning, middle, and end. And then also that the community owns the project. We walk away from it, it's theirs. It's theirs to not only maintain, but also to hold up and say, this is our place. On behalf of East West Gateway and the region's elected officials, I'm pleased to recognize Citizens for Modern Transit and AARP in St. Louis as recipients of the Leadership in Planning and Design Innovation Award. I'm particularly looking forward to seeing their projects in Belleville and at North Hanley Metrolink Station over the coming year. Our second award in this category goes to Great Rivers Greenway for the Mill Creek Valley Public Art Monument. Mill Creek Valley, once located between Compton Avenue and 20th Street in the city of St. Louis, was home, was home to a thriving community of black community of 20,000 residents, over 800 businesses and more than 40 houses of worship. In the late 1950s, during the age of urban renewal, the community was demolished for redevelopment and right of way for, interstate, for the interstate highway system. As a way to honor Mill Creek Valley, Great Rivers Greenway is incorporating a public art monument in the, into the design and construction of the Brickline Greenway. A four-year community engagement effort by Great Rivers Greenway is the source of inspiration for the project. We will now play a brief video about the Mill Creek Valley Public Art Monument. The Brickline Greenway is an interconnected system of uh, trails and connections between major institutions, neighborhoods, 17 neighborhoods. This particular section, the Mill Creek section that's being honored for this award, is really about honoring a neighborhood that was wiped out in the name of urban renewal. And we are delighted that artist Damon Davis 
came up with this concept of pedestals and portals. I'm the lead designer and artist that came up with the initial idea for this monument and the, these pieces. It's a collaborative effort throughout the city, but it's also some to commemorate Black St. Louis and a whole neighborhood of people that made St. Louis what it is today. One thing that's very surprising for me, and I'm very proud of, is that there are people that still are alive that live there. Showing this project to them and getting their approval has been the biggest reward that I didn't got so far out of this project. So the Greenway is embracing the art uh, as it travels from 20th Street to Compton to really honor the people that lived in this neighborhood and lift up their voices. One of the things that makes this worth honoring is just the intensive citizen engagement that went in the planning process. And we heard from people how important art would be to celebrate and honor the history of St. Louis. The thing that makes this project worthy of this award is that it's a, it's a collaborative effort to amend and remember a certain history that was erased, I guess, covered up, and it was specifically done by the government. So for the government to acknowledge its, its uh, existence and to commemorate it, I do think it's a, it's a step in the right direction, so I'm, I'm quite surprised by it. Market Street's never gonna look the same again once we build this greenway and install the art project. It's gonna be an incredible monument uh, to the past and hopefully the opportunity for people to think about planning in the future. I hope that it raises the morale and I hope it inspires a lot of people that's from here. On behalf of East West Gateway and the region's elected officials, I'm pleased to recognize Great Rivers Greenway as a recipient of the Leadership in Planning and Design Innovation Award. I'd also like to congratulate them on their uh, $15 million uh, raise grant uh, that they received uh, from USDOT yesterday, I believe. So congratulations um, on the funding for the Brickline uh, Greenway. Thank you. Kurt. Thank you. Uh, that concludes the 2021 Outstanding Local Government Achievement Awards. Congratulations again to all the recipients, the individuals who nominated them, and all who are here today to celebrate their accomplishments. In the program posted on the events page, you will find a list of all this year's nominations. We hope you will join us throughout the coming year in our efforts to make the St. Louis region a more prosperous community for all of its residents. We look forward to working toward that goal with each of you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending. Now please join me in giving one last round of applause for our award recipients. Very good. Please join us at 2 p.m. to view a session focused on 2020 census trends, population race and ethnicity and age in the St. Louis region. View this session after leaving this meeting, simply return to the annual meeting events page on the East West Gateway website and click on the link for the 2020 census trends, population, race, and ethnicity, and age in the St. Louis region se uh, session. Remember all the sessions, including the meeting and award ceremony we just concluded are being recorded and will be available for viewing in the near future. Thank you, the meeting is now adjourned.